This is the OTB Network. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses. I'm Jean Wood. A lot of stakes racing action to bring to you. Beginning with Calder's Summit of Speed card on Saturday. Always an exciting card. They put up a lot of money for some serious sprint racing. We're going to start things off with the Calder Turf Sprint. $100,000 dash on the grass last Saturday. Let's head to Calder in the running of the Turf Sprint. And they're off in the Calder Turf Sprint Handicap. On the outside, Placido breaks sharply as Tricky Storm rushes up in the middle of the course. Then to the outside, it's Take a Chance on Me. Moving at the hedge, it's Petrina above. Half length back to my girl, Lisa. Another length back to the outside. That's True Love's Secret. Then half length back, it's Joe's son, Joey. Length to the hedge, it's Call the Sheriff. Then two more lengths to the inside. That's Nuclear Debate. It's a half length back toward the outside. That's Stormy Roman, another half length. The trailer is Abdarian. They went the first quarter in 21 and 3, past the quarter pole to the top of the stretch. On the outside, Placido. Toward the inside, it's Tricky Storm. On the hedge, looking for room, it's Petrina above. Down the middle of the course, coming on next, True Love's Secret. Then toward the far outside, it's Nuclear Debate. They come to deep stretch. It's Joe's son, Joey, that's going to win it all by two. Call the sheriff up for the place. Abdarian came on to be third. Joe's son, Joey, and Joe Bravo pulling off a bit of an upset here. The favorite, lukewarm favorite, Testify, never really got on track. And this was a uh, bit of a barn burner, as most of these turf sprints are, with Joe's son, Joey, well-placed, angling out and rallying to a length and a quarter win over Call the Sheriff with Abdarian rallying from well back into the third spot. The winner, Joe's son, Joey, is a bay five-year-old horse, the son of fast play from Flew By Him by Air Forbes 1. Bred in Kentucky by the Jeb Stable. He is owned by Joseph Lunetta. Trained by Tim Hills and ridden to victory by Joe Bravo. Joe's son, Joey, covers the five furlongs of the Calder Turf Sprint in 55 and 3. Heading back down to Calder for more sprint action with the Azalea Breeders' Cup, a grade three $300,000 event for three-year-old fillies going six. Let's head back to Florida in the running of the Azalea. And they're off in the Azalea Breeders' Cup Stakes. Toward the far outside, Angela's Love, middle of the track. That's fabulous brush rushing up. Then toward the inside, it's Storm Flag. It's a half length back to Lady Stars. Then between horses, it's Little Miss Sparkle. Half length to the rail. That's all the honor moving up. Then it's another length back to Ebony Breeze. A length toward the outside, it's Big League Lady. Another length, that's Master Prospect. Then toward the inside, it's Crafty Brat. Half length back, that's Silver Lace. Then Crimson and Roses with Buffy the Centerfold. They went the first quarter in 20. 21 and 2. Three furlongs left to go. It's Storm Flag that leads by two. Next, it's Ebony Breeze moving up a length and a half toward the outside. It's Fabulous Brush. Then toward the rail. All the honor gets underway. It's another length and a half back between horses to Little Miss Sparkle. They went the half in 44 and 4, and they're at the top of the stretch. It's Storm Flag that leads by a length. Ebony Breeze comes after her down the middle of the track. Then three lengths back toward the outside. That's Little Miss Sparkle. Another length back. It's Crafty Brat. They come to the 16th pole. New leader, it's Ebony Breeze, and she starts to edge out. It's Ebony Breeze. She's going to take the Azalea Breeders' Cup stakes going away. Storm flag, an easy second. Crafty Brat gets the show. Ebony Breeze, another upset here in uh, Summit of Speed card day. Uh, breaking from the outside post position, she raced close to the pace and returned a very generous mutual over $20 on top with Storm Flag, the second choice in the wagering behind Buffy the Centerfold, showing the way in the early part of the running, holding on for second with Crafty Brat rallying well back into the third spot. Buffy the Centerfold did go off as the choice in here. Uh, she did have a little bit of trouble at the start. She was six wide on the turn past some horses late but finished a disappointing sixth in the full field of 13. The winner, Ebony Breeze, is a three-year-old bay daughter of Belong to Me from Valid Carnauba by Valid Appeal. She was bred in Kentucky by the Kinsman Farm, owned by Mr. Steinbrenner's Kinsman Stable and trained by Bill Mott, ridden to victory by Cornelio Velasquez. Ebony Breeze covers the six furlongs of the Azalea in 110 and 4. 
Continuing with sprint racing action from Calder with the grade three carry back stakes for three-year-olds going six furlongs. $300,000 the purse. Let's head back to Calder and the running of the carry back. And they're off in the carry back stakes. Toward the outside, King Robin breaks sharply and moves forward the lead as Awesome, of course, moves up in the middle of the track. Then toward the inside, it's Cajun Beat. It's another half length. Roll, Hennessy Roll, rolls up on the rail. Then it's a length and a half back to Valid Video. Inside of him comes Coach Jimmy Lee. Another length back to the inside, that's Halo Home Wrecker. Then two more lengths to Superfuse. Another length and a half, it's Law Book. And three lengths to Sweet Devil. They went the first quarter in 21 and 3. They leave the back stretch and move through the 3 8th pole. On the inside. It's awesome, of course, on the outside. King Robin, their heads apart. Valid Video comes after the leader's third. Then toward the inside, that's Cajun Beat. It's another half length back to the outside. It's Super Fuse. They're past the quarter pole to the top of the stretch in the carry back stakes. On the inside, moving now to get the lead, it's Valid Video. It's a length back toward the outside. That's Cajun Beat moving up. They move toward the eighth pole. Valid Video now leads by two. Toward the outside, it's uh, Cajun Beat. Then a half length back to the inside, King Robin. They come to the 16th pole. It's Valid Video in front. And they're not going to get him today. He takes the carry back stakes by two. Cajun Beat was second. Superfuse came on to be third. Valid video, a nice effort a couple of races back last time out second in the gilded time. Began his career with two nice, or began his season rather, with two nice wins. Did uh, show a little bit of a disappointing form two back and then came back with a nice try last time out. He is now five for eight lifetime. Still allowed to go off at a generous eight and a half to one to pick up a two and a quarter length victory over Cajun Beat, who was also a horse that had been quite competitive with nice horses earlier this year. Superfuse, another uh, solid sprinting stakes winner, picking up the third spot with his usual off the pace rallying move. The winner, a Valid Video, is a Dark Bayer Brown three year old gelded son of Valid Wager from Miss Video by Star Gallant. Bred in Florida by Casey Seaman. He is owned by Mac Fassenfeld and trained by Dennis Manning. Ridden to victory by Joe Bravo, picking up his second victory in the Summit of Speed stakes card. Valid Video covers the six furlongs in the carry back in one minute and ten seconds flat. Sprinting fillies and mares up next in the Princess Rooney Handicap. $500,000 on offer for fillies and mares sprinting six furlongs. Gold Mover upset extra heat in this event last year. She's back to defend. Let's head back to Florida and the running of the Princess Rooney. And they're off for the Princess Rooney Handicap. Chispisky on the outside breaks sharply as Harmony Lodge moves up along the inside and Gold Mover joins them in the first flight. Then it's two lengths back toward the inside. Miss Lodi moves up next. Vision and flight to the outside. Then Chocolate Mint half length back to Slew's final answer and two lengths to trailer for Rubies. They move up the back stretch past the half mile pole. They went the first quarter in 21 and 2. At the rail, Harmony Lodge leads by almost a length. Gold Movers in second position. Moving out the rail, that's Miss Lodi. Then to the far outside, it's Chispisky. It's another length back. That's Vision in Flight. A length toward the outside. That's four rubies. Then a length to the rail. It's Lou's final answer and a length and a half to Chocolate Mint. They're past the quarter pole to the top of the stretch in the Princess Rooney handicap. Harmony Lodge, the one to catch, leads by a lane. Gold Mover put the pressure a second down the middle of the track. Here comes Vision in flight, then a length back toward the inside. It's Chispisky with four rubies. They come past the eighth pole toward the inside. It's Gold Mover on the outside. Vision in flight in the final 16th. Vision in flight trying to spring the upset. Gold Mover battles back toward the inside. It's going to be too close to call the Princess Rooney. Gold mover Jerry Bailey getting the defense here, although this time just by a desperate nose over the longest shot on the board. Vision in flight, those two four and a quarter lengths in front of the third place finisher, pace setter Harmony Lodge. Uh, winner Gold mover, maybe not quite as sharp as she was this time last year, but still a very nice effort by the winner. Vision in flight, the longest shot on the board, 64 to 1. Had finished second in two consecutive minor stakes races down in Florida at Calder Racecourse in her two prior trials. The winner, Gold Mover, is a chestnut five-year-old mare, a daughter of Gold Fever from Intentional Move by Tentum. She was bred in Kentucky by her owner, Edward P. Evans, trained by Mark Hennig, and ridden to victory by Jerry Bailey. Gold Mover covers the six furlongs of the Princess Rooney, time a little bit slower than the three-year-old fillies earlier on the card, 111 and 1. 
going to head back to Florida for one more sprint on Saturday. The Smile Sprint Handicap, a grade three, half a million dollars for the older sprinters. Let's head back down to Calder in the running of the Smile. And they're off in the Smile Sprint Handicap. On the far outside, Shake You Down rushes for the lead, middle of the track. Swift Replica moves up to challenge. Then it's a length back to the inside. Here, Zealous moves up third. Built ups between horses next. Then toward the inside, it's Echo Eddie. Half length to the outside, to Meteor. Then another length back. That's Tour of the Cat on the outside. At the rail, it's My Cousin Matt. It's two lengths back to the far outside. That's Private Horde. Moving between horses here, no evil. Then toward the inside, it's Juggernaut. Another four lengths. That's Lord Abounding and four more lengths. The trailer is Bills Paid. They went the first quarter in 21 and 1, and they moved toward the quarter pole. On the inside, it's here Zealous that has a short lead with Shake You Down right alongside. Now Shake You Down reaches the lead. They're past the quarter pole in the Smile Sprint handicap. They've got Shake You Down to catch. Leads by a length. To the inside, here Zealous is second. Down the middle of the track, that's my cousin Matt. Another two lengths to the outside, Echo Eddie. They come to the final furlong. Shake You Down leads by four and they're not going to get him today. Shake You Down widens now and opens up six. On the outside, my cousin Matt's coming on to the inside. Private Horde. It's Shake You Down. He takes the Smile Sprint Handicap. Shake You Down has now won five consecutive races since being claimed for $65,000 on March 12th on the Aqueduct Inner Track. He has put together a terrific skein of races and has to be considered one of the most impressive sprinting horses on the East Coast. He has done most of his running in the New York and New Jersey circuit, took his act on the road and won the Smile Sprint in impressive fashion, drawing off under a vigorous hand ride by Mike Luzzi to an eight and a quarter length win over Longshot Private Horde. My cousin Matt, another horse with pretty good credentials in the East Coast sprinting scene, picking up the third spot. The winner, Shake You Down, is a chestnut five-year-old horse, the son of Montbrook from Marvin Gway by Rajab. He was bred in Florida by the Ocala Stud, owned by Robert L. Cole Jr. and trained by Scott Lake. Ridden to victory by Mike Luzzi, Shake You Down covers the six furlongs of the Smile Sprint in 110 flat. We're going to pause for a brief message, and when we return, we'll be taking a look at stakes racing action from Monmouth, Colonial, and Prairie Meadows. Please stay tuned. We tried telling you nicely. Get with the program. Then we got a little bolder. Get with the program. Now we're practically shouting. Get with the program. New York Bread. And here are some of the reasons why. New York Bread's race for purses and incentives exceeding $40 million. New York Bread yearling prizes have risen significantly, bucking the national trend. The New York Stallion Stakes Series has expanded to eight races worth a combined one and a quarter million dollars. New York Bread Restricted Stakes have grown from seventy-five to hundred thousand dollars at both Belmont and Saratoga, and they're doing okay in open company. Isn't it time for you to get with the program, the New York Breeding and Racing Program? Welcome back, everyone, to Horses and Courses. We're heading to Monmouth next, and the Long Branch Breeders' Cup stakes a grade $300,000 mile in the 16th for three-year-olds at Monmouth Park. Let's head to Monmouth in the running of the Long Branch. They're racing at the Long Branch Breeders' Cup stakes, and a good start. Christina's outlawed, Chili Rooster both broke well, so did Max Forever. Right behind them is In Hand, who's taken back, and just outside of Newfoundland and Ashmore, moving into the clubhouse turn, where the leader is Chili Rooster, and Victor Carrero sends him along to lead by a length and a half. Christina's outlaw is second, Max Forever, hard held early, racing on heels, third by another length, and Ashmore fourth on the outside, three lengths from the front. After that, it's Newfoundland and in hand trails, seven off the lead. First quarter went in 23 and four, they're on to the back stretch, and the leader is Chili Rooster. Christina's outlaw, the favorite, second on the outside. Then comes Ashmore, Max Forever still pinned in at the rail, waiting for a bit of running room. Newfoundland has been swung to the outside, and now Max Forever is being sent up the rail by Jose Ferrer. They found an opening, and they've taken the lead. Max Forever takes charge. Chili Rooster gave up the rail, and is back running in second. Christina's outlaw is third. Then it's Newfoundland on the far outside, and Ashmore only a length and a half from the front. In hand trails. 48 flat half mile. 
around the far turn, and now Chili Roosters back in front. Christina's Outlaws alongside. Max Forever is down at the rail. Two lengths back to Newfoundland, followed next by Ashmore and in hand on the inside. Three quarters in one eleven and three. They're into the stretch. And it is Christina's Outlaw, Chili Rooster, and Max Forever across the track. In hand is up to fourth. Final furlong, three hours battle. Christina's Outlaw, Chili Rooster, and Max Forever. Now it's Max Forever and Christina's Outlaw. Max Forever's in front. Christina's Outlaw, head bobbing to the wire. Max Forever won the long branch. Then Christina's Outlaw, close for third, Chili Rooster and Ashmore. Max Forever, a little bit of an upset here, 11 and a half to one with a head victory over Christine's Outlaw, who's getting a bit of a reputation as a hard luck horse, losing a couple of close ones in recent efforts as the favorite this time. Chili Rooster down from New York sets the pace and holds on well to finish in the third spot. The winner, Max Forever, is a dark bear brown three-year-old son of Montbrook from Jiffener by Derby Wish. He was bred by John Franks in Florida owned by Raymond and Dorothy Dweck and trained by Ben Perkins Jr. Ridden to victory by Jose Ferrer, Max Forever covers the mile in the 16th of the Long Branch in 143 and two. Heading to Colonial Downs next for a pair of stakes races on the grass this weekend. Run on Saturday, the All Along Breeders' Cup Stakes, a grade three, $200,000 for fillies and mares going a mile and an eighth on the grass. Let's head to Colonial in the running of the All Along. And they're off in the All Along Breeders' Cup. Lady Linda came out okay, but bobbled shortly after the start. Dressed to Thrill's going right out to the front. Dressed to Thrill, along with Golden Corona, showing good early foot, too. So it's Golden Corona and Dressed to Thrill on the first turn, and Silent Crystal going to be unhurried off the top pair. Followed by Class Yankee, who travels along in fourth, and a close fourth, only two and a half lengths off the lead. Kara Blady now guided over to save some ground. She's in the two path around that first turn. It's a break of about four or five. Back to Bale Bond, then Lady of the Future, Lady Linda, and uh, cruise along in the back of the pack. So they make their way around the turn and a moderate pace out there for the big favorite, Dressed to Thrill. She broke through the front of the gate, ran off a furlong just before the race, but she appears nice and relaxed out there. Leads it by a length. Golden Corona racing second and Silent Crystals in the third spot. Running up fourth now is Carab Lady, just three lengths off the lead. Class Yankee comes to some early pressure just before the turn. Lady Linda and Bale Bond are about seven lengths in the front. Lady of the Future and Cruise Along is the trailer. So it's Dressed to Thrill and Edgar Prado from Golden Corona. Silent Crystal sitting chilly in third. Carab Lady being asked for a bit more kick there in fourth. Lady Linda's run up fifth and six lengths off the lead. Class Yankee followed by Bale Bond, Lady of the Future and Cruise Along in the back, but a wide move from Cruise Along from last. They're at the top of the stretch now, and it's dressed to thrill, and Edgar Prado still showing the way. Golden Corona has been chasing him the entire trip. Pat Day now with Silent Crystal asked to kick through on the inside. Center track is Lady Linda is running a big one, and Lady of the Future has come storming home on the far outside. Dressed to Thrill has got a hold off a wall of challengers. Carib Lady gets a run on the inside. Lady Linda far outside. Dressed to Thrill just in front. Dressed to Thrill from Lady Linda, and this is how you do it, says Dressed to Thrill. You can run off before the race and still win the all along. Lady Linda was second, followed by Lady of the Future in third, followed by Carib Lady. And in the back of the pack there, we uh, had mid-pack a uh, bail bond. Dressed to thrill, no surprise here, with a half-length victory as the heavy odds-on choice. A little bit on the eager side, she broke through the gate for about an eighth of a mile, uh, ran down the track without Edgar Prado's assistance. They were able to get her, rein her in, reload, and she was off to the races as soon as the gates opened. Edgar Prado throttling down her speed divvying out her speed carefully and set leisurely fractions for this quality of a mare holding on by a half a length from lady linda lady of the future finishing in the third spot both of those two fillies making late runs from well off the pace the winner dressed to thrill is a bay four-year-old daughter of dane hill from trusted partner by a firm she was bred in ireland by the moigler Mor stud owned by moigler stud and trained by chris clement ridden to victory by edgar prado dressed to thrill covers the mile and an eighth on the colonial turf in one 49 flat. Heading back to Colonial in Virginia for the running of the Virginia Derby. A half a million dollars for three-year-olds going a mile and a quarter on their renowned turf course. Let's head back to Colonial and the running of the Virginia Derby. Ready to run in the Virginia Derby and they're off. 
All off to a good beginning, it appeared. And a Hatton Cross goes right to the front favorite, Senor Swinger. And Sagins right up close to the early pace to Silver Tree on the far outside, now tugging forward. And Silver Tree is going to take a narrow lead. Hatton Cross, Senor Swinger is settling down to the inside, along with Sagint. Followed in the far outside by Rowan's Park and kicking Chris in between horses. Third last position, only about three to four lengths in the front. King's Drama relaxed toward the rear of the field, about seven lengths off the lead. And Christmas away as the trailer nine lengths covers the field in the Virginia Derby. So Silver Tree and Edgar Prado will dictate terms out there, gliding right along in the opening quarter, 24 seconds flat. Hatton Cross Racing second, Sagitt is in third, and Rowan's Park next in fourth. Here's Senior Swinger in fifth position, now passed on the outside by Kickin'. Chris. King's drama is about six lengths in the front and Christmas away the back of the pack. 47 four fifths of a second for the half mile. So the pace picks up just a little bit, but not that much with about five furlongs to go. Silver Tree and Edgar Prado still out there a little more than a length. Hatton Cross in second. Rowan's Park outside third. Sigint racing along in fourth, followed by Kick and Chris in fifth. Then we go back to King's drama. Senor Swingers asked for some run now, but dropped to second last position and some seven or eight lengths off the lead and Christmas away trailing the field. Eight lengths covers them with just about three furlongs to go. Silver Tree's in front after six furlongs and one eleven four fifths of a second. Still Silver Tree from Hatton Cross against running a big race too. Extreme outside is Rowan's Park is next in line. Picking away through in between is Kick and Chris. Senior Swing is going to swing five wide into the stretch but under a drive and they're homeward bound now and Silver Tree's got more and opens up now sudden three lengths. In the second spot now trying to come to make a race of it. Here's our Kick and Chris Extreme outside now also on the move is King's Drama but it's still Silver Tree and second is kicking Chris and on the far outside King's Drama has moved to third but Silver Tree and Edgar Prado in a gate to wire win by two lengths. Silver Tree another upset once again it's Edgar Prado uh, picking up both of the stakes races on the Colonial card on Saturday on the grass and very nice effort here on the front end. A length and a half the better of long shot kick and Chris as they cross the finish line. King's Drama rallied from well off the pace as Senor Swinger, the favorite who had been very impressive in his two tries earlier this season on the grass, ran between horses early, did swing wide at about the six, 3 sixteenths pole, tired some passing, tired, passed some tired rivals, but was not really able to make up much ground at all, finishing well back in fourth, uh, setting up some huge show payoff as the heavy odds-on choice runs off the board. The winner of Silver Tree is a chestnut three-year-old son of Hennessy from Blue Begum by with approval, making him a brother to Orchard Park, another stakes race, stakes horse from the same connections, bred in Florida by Peter Vegso, owned by Mr. Vegso, and trained by Bill Mott. Ridden to victory by Edgar Prado, Silver Tree covers the mile and a quarter on the firm turf in two minutes, one flat. Heading next to Iowa and Prairie Meadows for a pair of stakes, beginning with Friday night's running of the Iowa Breeders' Distaff Breeders' Cup. $125,000 on offer for fillies and mares going a mile and a sixteenth. Let's head to Prairie Meadows and the Iowa Breeders' Distaff. And they're off. Field all comes away in good order from the far outside. That see how she runs. So much more toward the inside. Missing Miss is nearest to the rail. Sharky's review will be taken in hand. And Barney's mistress will trail the field as they move into the clubhouse turn. So much more will set the pace. Missing Miss comes through an opening on the inside to poke her head in front. So much more to the outside counters to get back on even terms than two and a half lengths to see how she runs, who is sitting in the third spot, about four lengths off of the lead. Barney's mistress has moved into fourth, and Sharky's review has been uh, relegated to last about five lengths off of the lead as they head up the back stretch in the fourth running of the Iowa Distaff. So much more is leading the way. So much more has it by a length. Missing Miss is now off the rail and coming up to the leader's flank. See how she runs is sitting in third, two to Barney's mistress, and Sharky's review trails the field. They head into the far turn. The half was run in 47 seconds flat. So much more continues to lead. Has it by a neck. Missing Miss and Willie Martinez to the outside second. The whip is out on see how she runs. She's fallen two and a half lengths 
off of the lead while running third. Barney's Mistress and Sharky's Review. They're at the top of the stretch. Alvarado calling on so much more. Missing Miss up to look her in the eye now as they straighten away in the lane. It's Missing Miss on the outside. She's taken the lead. So much more is back into second. See how she runs is beaten. A sixteenth of a mile to go. Missing Miss is going to win the fourth running of the Iowa Distaff. She does it by about three in the end. So much more finishes second. See how she runs. Sharky's Review and Barney's Mistress. Missing Miss and Willie Martinez uh, dueled in the early part of the going. In fact, lost the lead to see uh, to so much more for uh, part of the running, but was able to re-rally with a three and a three-quarter length four to one victory over so much more. See how she runs. Stalking position weakening late to finish in the third spot. The winner, Missing Miss, is a dark bay or brown four-year-old filly, a daughter of unaccounted for from deputy double by Miss Deputy Minister. She was bred in Kentucky by the late Landon Knight, who has been long a staple in the New York program. This one was one of his Kentucky breds, however. Owned by Cynthia Knight, trained by James Baker, and ridden to victory by Willie Martinez. Missing Miss covers the mile on the 16th at Prairie Meadows in 142 and 1. Heading back to Iowa for Saturday night's running of the Prairie Medi Meadows Corn Husker Breeders' Cup Handicap, a grade three, $350,000, a race that often draws some of the strongest horses in the Midwest circuit. Let's head back to Iowa and the running of the Corn Husker. And they're off. I'll come away to a good start. Ten pins on the outside. Uh, comes out well. Colorful tour. Patton's victory on the inside. Those three have lined up straight across the track as they pass under the wire for the first time. Then two and a half lengths further back to Wood Moon. Slider is away next to last, and Bowman's Band trails the field as the sextet moves into the clubhouse turn in the seventh running of the Cornhusker. On the outside, Colorful Tour. To the inside, Patton's victory. Colorful Tour has his head in front. Patton's victory is running second with six furlongs to go. Ten pins is laying just off the embattled front runners, free of trouble, running third on the outside. Slider tugging hard at the bit has moved along inside of Wood Moon. Wood Moon is only two from the front, and Bowman's band three and a half lengths from front to back as they head up the back stretch. Ten pins has moved alongside the inner two. Colorful tour between runners. Patton's victory is on the inside. Wood Moon in the white blinkers is right there running in fourth. Slider is going to need some racing room. He's pinned down along the inside, and Bowman's band will be four wide moving into the far turn. Alvarado has sent a confident ten pins to the front. It's ten pins who has a head in front. Bowman's band coming three wide. Alvarado getting busy now. In between horses, Wood Moon. It's those three across the track as they arrive at the top of the stretch in the Cornhusker Breeders' Cup handicap. Ten pins turns for home a half a length to the good. Gidry goes to work on Bowman's band. Wood Moon is throwing in the towel. Slider has a lot of work to do. They're inside the final furlong. It's ten pins. He'll have to hold off Bowman's band, but ten pins has enough left. Ten pins is going to win the seventh running of the Cornhusker Breeders' Cup handicap. He does it by almost two. Bowman's band is second, then Wood Moon followed by Patton's victory, Colorful Tour, and Slider. Ten pins returns victorious. A huge effort by this horse. Obviously, a very talented racehorse does seem to have some uh, some problems. He has had a number of layoff lines throughout his career, but uh, returns now at the age of five with a big win and a big money event over Bowman's Band made his usual off-the-pace rallying move with Woodman, a very nice effort by this horse who switches back and forth between the main track and turf with considerable ease, finishing in the third spot. Another nice effort, however, from Ten Pins, a chestnut five-year-old son of Smart Strike from Maid's Broom by Deputy Minister. He was bred in Michigan by Joseph Atello, owned by his breeder and trained by Don Winfrey, ridden to victory by Robbie Alvarado. Ten Pins covers the mile and an eighth of the Corn Husker in one minute, 48 and one. We're going to pause for one more brief message, and when we return, we'll be taking a look at stakes racing action from Hollywood Park and Belmont. Please stay tuned. This year, many thoroughbreds, no longer able to compete, will join the ranks of racing's homeless. The Thoroughbred Retirement Foundation and its supporters have been providing help and hope, creating opportunities where once there were none. The TRF, together with the racing industry, is meeting the challenge taking care of their own. With your help, 
we can continue our saving mission, ensuring many more horses the welcome home they so richly deserve. Who is this woman? A world-class tennis player? A famous fashion model? No, this is Diane Nelson, one of the nation's top-ranked jockeys. When Diane rides, she wants the best horse. And when Diane has a day off, she wants the best entertainment. And that's at the Teletheater Clubhouse. If you haven't been to the Teletheater Clubhouse yet, you're missing something. It's really for everyone. Bring your friends, your family, and come on down. The Teletheater Clubhouse, Central Avenue, Albany. Welcome back, everyone, to Horses and Courses. We're heading to Hollywood Park next for one of the uh, better races on the Hollywood Sprint cards every year, the Robert Curlin Memorial, $75,000 ungraded stakes race, but one that always draws a good group of horses sprinting on the Hollywood turf course. Let's head to Hollywood for the running of the Curlin Memorial. They're set. They're off. Full Moon Madness broke on top. DeValmont and Rocky Bar, and there goes Rocky Bar and DeValmont. Right to the front, Full Moon Madness, very sharp off the layoff. Ecstatic is next, then No Armistice, and C to C. DeValmont out sprints Rocky Bar up the backstretch. You've got to fly to do that, and DeValmont is. He's a length and a half in front. Rocky Bar is second. Full Moon Madness is less than three lengths from the lead. Ecstatic's a length behind him. Then it's a gap of eight lengths back to No Armistice, and C to C as they round the far turn of Almont trying to spring a major upset. He leads Rocky Bar by two lengths. Full Moon Madness in striking position third, less than three from the front. No Armistice goes up three wide. It's still eight back to No Armistice and Ecstatic has moved up into third and they head to the top of the stretch. It is still DeValmont. Full Moon Madness going to try to gun him down in the final furlong. Ecstatic races third. Full Moon Madness takes over the lead. Ecstatic up into second. C to C is flying from the back of the pack. Full Moon Madness. Ecstatic. C to C charge just late, full moon madness, C to C, full moon madness. The Dr. Robert K. Curlin Memorial Handicap goes to full moon madness. He beats C to C by a neck. Ecstatic finish third, close for fourth. They always put on a show in this race. This year, no exception as full moon madness sits off the blistering early pace, was able to win by about a half a length, four and a half to one from C to C, rallying from way back off the pace. And ecstatic, who sat just off the rail about two wide on the turn, made a nice move in the stretch, but was unable to match the top two finishers in here. Uh, pace always fast. They come home fast at Hollywood, uh, Hollywood Turf Course always yielding very fast times for their sprints. Full Moon Madness, an eight-year-old chestnut gelding, a son of half a year from Soft Charm by Secretariat, was bred in California by Mr. and Mrs. Maybe. He is owned by the Corey Family Trust and trained by Robert Marshall. Ridden to victory by Jose Valdivia. The very speedy Full Moon Madness covers the five and a half on the Hollywood turf in one minute, two seconds flat. Heading back to Hollywood for a trio of Sunday stakes races, beginning with the Agleam Handicap, a grade two, $250,000 seven furlong event for fillies and mares. Let's head back to Hollywood in the running of the Agleam. They're up. Bear Fan broke a stride slow. Wild Tickle and a quickly recovering Bear Fan, and now Bear Fan puts her neck in front. Wild Tickle away in second. C's Elegance and You are third and fourth, and Affluent is fifth and last as they head up the back stretch. Bear Fan is free running now, and she's uncontested on the lead. It is David Flores and Bear Fan to set the pace. She's two and a half lengths in front of Wild Tickle, about to be joined three deep by C's Elegance. You is in fourth at this point, and she's three and a half lengths off the lead, and she is ten lengths in front of Affluent. They're at the half mile pole of the Agleam Handicap and Bear Fan is the one to catch. She goes into the far turn. Two lengths in front of C's Elegance who now takes second. Wild Tickle is at the rail third, two and a half from the front. You is asked for more now by Jerry Bailey. Gonna slip inside of Wild Tickle and now take third. You is three and a half from the front. Affluent is catching up to the back of the pack. She still has to make up six in the final quarter mile and Bear Fan is the leader. She is only a neck in front of C's Elegance who threatens to run a monster race. You has to go right now. She's joined by Affluent from the outside and C's Elegance has taken over the lead. Bear fans back to second. You and Affluent are together but they're four lengths behind C's Elegance the Calbred in the Agleam and C's Elegance is three in front. You and Affluent coming after her but they will not catch the winner and the winner is C's Elegance. 
Seas Elegance runs by a pretty nice group of horses in here. She's had a perfect stalking trip and won by a length and a half at almost 10 to 1 from the favored Yu, who was uh, actually a little bit uh, relaxed early. She was off just a little bit slowly under Jerry Bailey and did end up nosing out Affluent for the second spot, but a filly who's usually a very aggressive mare on the front end this time sits back and uh, rallied quite kindly. Affluent finishing in the third spot after being unhurried early. She did run about three wide into the lane. The winner, Seas Elegance, was off the board in the graded Desert Stormer last out. Prior to that, had been quite successful, winning the Be Thoughtful and Restricted California Bread Company. And here wins a nice grade two in an invitational condition. Seas Elegance is a gray or roan six-year-old mare, a daughter of Seas Tizzy from Elegant Beauty by Norcliffe. She was bred in California by Cecilia Straub Rubens, owned by Seas Stable and trained by Doug O'Neill, ridden to victory by Victor Espinosa. Seas Elegance covers the seven furlongs in one. 21 and 2. Right back to Hollywood Park for the running of the Swaps, one of their bigger races on the summer program. For three-year-olds, it's a grade two, $400,000 mile and an eighth. Let's head back to Hollywood in the running of the Swaps. They're off. Perfect start. During is sent right out for the front by Jerry Bailey, and During immediately takes charge. Logician away in second. Eye of the Tiger is close up. Out of here will be four wide early. Ballistic is just in behind the leaders, and the early trailer is ten most wanted, and the early leader is During. It is During to round the clubhouse turn. A tight length in front of Eye of the Tiger, who smoothly runs up into second. Logician is at the rail. He's tucked in third, two and a half from the front. Out of here, loses ground at the first turn. Ballistic is fifth. He is three and a half lengths off the lead. Ten most wanted, reserved at the back of the pack by Pat Day as they head up the back stretch in the 30th running of the swap stakes. And During's lead is only a neck now as Eye of the Tiger is closer in second. Jerry Bailey lets out a notch and During's back in front three quarters. Make it a length and a quarter. During to the half mile pole now in charge again. Eye of the Tiger is comfortable track him in second. Out of here makes his move and so does 10 most wanted. Here comes 10 most wanted. He is up into fourth. Less than two and a half from the lead. 10 most wanted will be four wide all the way around the far turn. Ballistic and Logician make it six around the far turn. Three and a half lengths from first to last and During is still there. He is fresh and fit in the swaps and he goes to the quarter pole a length and a quarter in front of both Eye of the Tiger and 10 most wanted. Now the two favorites are coming after During and they line up at the quarter pole. Three and a half back to Ballistic and out of here. Ten most wanted and Eye of the Tiger. These two kick on and they're even at the top of the stretch in the swaps. Ten most wanted. Eye of the Tiger goes right with them and these two throw it down for the final eighth of a mile. During is still part of this battle. Ten most wanted. Eye of the Tiger a resurgent During back at the rail. Out of here makes it four to the wire and During has retaken the lead. Ten most wanted. During yes! During Jerry Bailey didn't uh, didn't go out there for uh, for the beautiful Southern California weather. Although the weather was very nice out there, Jerry spent the day at the Summit of Speed the prior day. Picked up a win with Gold Mover. Went to California. Picked up the win with During in very nice fashion and an interestingly run race. He did actually lose the lead, uh, regained it, and won by a head from uh, Ten Most Wanted, who was very very good for Pat Day. Once again, unfortunately falling short. I had the Tiger and out of here in a dead heat for. The third spot in here, Eye of the Tiger with a stalking trip out of here. A little bit wider at the uh, 516th pole, but uh, both of them dead heating in the third spot. The winner, however, During, has had a little bit of a reputation for not being that much of a fighter. Here he re he changes some people's minds with a very nice re-rallying move. He's a dark bay or brown son of Cherokee run from Blading Saddle by Blade. He was bred in Kentucky by Gulf States Racing and is owned by Joe or James McInvale, trained by Bob Baffert and ridden to victory by Jerry Bailey. During covers the mile and an eighth of the swaps in 149 and 1. Big event on the weekend's card at Hollywood Park, of course, the Hollywood Gold Cup. Grade one, $750,000 at a mile and a quarter. Let's head back to Hollywood in the running of the Gold Cup. And they're at the post for the 64th Hollywood Gold Cup. They're off. 
Golden ticket immediately sent to the front by Patrick Valenzuela. Western Pride comes to take him on early, and these two go very fast from the gate. Harlan's Holiday breaks in third. Congaree is taken back off the pace or just out sprinted early. He and Harlan's Holiday already three and a half from the front. Rodian and Kudos are next, and the early trailer is the stretch running Pienza Sanando as they go very fast into the clubhouse turn, and Golden Ticket is now confronted by Congaree tightly at the rail. Jerry Bailey's going to go ahead and concede the lead, though, as Golden Ticket is determined to set the pace. Western Pride into second. Congaree got within a neck of the lead, and now suddenly he's two and a half lengths off the lead as he's tucked in back at the rail in third. Harlan's Holiday just a half length behind him. Then it's a monster gap of 15 lengths back to the three stretch runners, Rodian and Kudos. Pienza Sanando, if he wins the 64th Hollywood Gold Cup, he will make up 18 lengths, and he'll do it in five furlongs. Western Pride and Congaree Congaree run right by Golden Ticket, and so these two to the half-mile pole, and Congaree is a neck in front. Western Pride is second. Harlan's Holiday in striking position third. He's less than two and a half lengths off the lead. Golden Ticket is out of gas and backs out of it. Pienza, Sanando, and Kudos have to go right now. They're still 12 from the lead. Rodian is the trailer, and they round the far turn. Congaree is just over a quarter mile from Hollywood Gold Cup glory, but he'll have to hold off Harlan's Holiday, who's closer now in second. Congaree asks for a full-out sprint to the top of the stretch. Harlan's Holiday races in second. Both Kudos and Pienza Sanando are moving in. They're now within six lengths of the lead, and they'll have to fire down the lane to catch Congaree, who comes to the final furlong and now leads by three. Harlan's Holiday took a run at him at the quarter pole, but now he's second. Kudos is still five back. Pienza Sanando is fourth, and Congaree is straight and strong. It is Congaree three and a half in front. Harlan's Holiday is second. The Gold Cup is Congaree. Congaree proving once and for all that I guess he can go a mile and a quarter. His run in the Santa Anita handicap when he just lost to true 10 furlong specialist Milwaukee Brew uh, pretty much sealed up for me that this horse was able to go the 10 furlongs. Here he gets the perfect ride under Jerry Bailey, stalking early, drawing out to about a length and a half and asked to sprint clear as is his forte. Top of the stretch, Jerry Bailey just shook the reins at him a little bit, and he opens up three on Harlan's Holiday with kudos rallying from well back off the pace into the third spot. Nice effort by Congaree. Obviously a big rebounding effort off a very disappointing effort in New York last time out. Certainly fans of this horse are happy to see him back on his game and finally get that much elusive 10 furlong win in grade one company. The winner, Congaree, is a five-year-old chestnut horse, the son of Arazi from Mary Sheba by Mary's Book. He was bred in Kentucky by Stoner Side Stable. He is owned by Stoner Side and trained by Bob Baffert, ridden to victory by Jerry Bailey. Congaree covers the mile and a quarter of the Hollywood Gold Cup in two minutes and two fifth seconds. We're heading to Belmont now, and we started this program with a bunch of sprints. We're ending with a bunch of uh, distance races. Uh, the last two races of the program, both on the turf course at Belmont Park, we're going to kick the uh, Belmont weekend off with, off with the Bowling Green Handicap, a grade two distance event for older horses, $150,000 on offer. Let's head to Belmont and the running of the Bowling Green. And they're off. State Shinto off to an alert beginning. Slough Valley there on the outside. Quest Star away at the rail in third. As they make their way for the first turn, State Shinto is the early leader. And Quest Star down inside. Slough Valley on the outside. And behind them, Thompson Rouge runs in fourth position. McCaw on the outside races fifth early. Then Dawn of the Condor, Esperance, Gritty, Sandy. The last of them all is Whitmore's Con. As they move along at a fairly leisurely pace in the early stages here, State Shinto is the leader by a length. Mild pressure from Slough Valley running second. The first quarter in a pokey 25 and three-fifths seconds. The pace very deliberate in the early stages here. Migliori with a good hold over the front running State Shinto. Right alongside Slough Valley is escort into the back stretch run. Thompson Rouge up there now. A bit keen is Thompson Rouge running in third position. Just in behind the leaders, Quest Stars now shuffled back into fourth. And then it's McCaw, followed by Donna the Condor, Esperance, Whitmore's Con, and Gritty Sandy. 
State Shinto, the leader, a narrow lead with six furlongs to go. They walk through the opening half mile in 51 and 1. Slovelli alongside second. And then it's Thompson Rouge is in the clear third. Quest Star pinned down at the hedge in fourth. Followed by McCall's about five lengths from the lead. And then it's Dawn of the Condor, followed by Whitmore's Con Esperance Gritty Sandy trailing as the field moves into the final turn. State Shinto and Slough Valley have been 1 2 through three quarters of a mile in 115 and 1. Thompson Rouge remains just outside of Quest Star. McCaw being asked to pick it up. Dawn of the Condor down on the fence, running sixth. Whitmore's Con Gritty, Sandy, and Esperance coming to the top of the stretch. Slough Valley on even terms now with State Shinto, who's in a drive. Quest Star's just in behind them. Dawn of the Condor has moved up in the pack and is now fourth. McCall on the outside, fifth, top of the stretch. Slough Valley's got a short lead. Quest Star's now got some running room and is full of run, and here comes Quest Star on the outside. And State Shinto fights on at the rail. Whitmore's Con is a late threat as they come down to the finish of McCaw. They're coming down to the wire. Quest Star in front. Whitmore's Con with a flying finish. It's going to be close, and it's going to be Whitmore's Con by a neck. Gets it in the final strides, nipping Quest Star, and McCaw got up for third. Whitmore's Con makes it two in a row in this particular race. The uh, Bowling Green seems to be right up his alley. The pace was leisurely, crawling up the backstretch, but Whitmore's Con still able to rally by a half a length over Quest Star, a very nice proven graded stakes horse going long on the turf with McCaw, an Irish import, still looking for his uh, first American win, but has been knocking on the door with very good efforts against some pretty strong fields. Uh, State Shinto did lose the lead uh, by the top of the stretch, backed up as the even money favorite to finish fifth in this very evenly matched field of horses. You could see by the closeness as they crossed the finish line, the first four horses quite close, that this was a very evenly matched group. The winner, Whitmore's Con, is a dark bay or brown horse, a five-year-old son of Chris S. from Albanita by deputy or by deputed testimony. He was bred right here in New York by Bud Wolf and Joe D'Agostino. He is owned by Michael and Lynn Shanley. We've got local connections here. Congratulations to them. Whitmore's Con repeats in the Bowling Green under Jean-Luc Samin. Failed to mention Randy Schulhofer as well. Training this horse, continuing to do a terrific job with a number of horses in New York, including a lot of terrific turf horses. Whitmore's Con repeats under Jean-Luc Samin. Final time for the Bowling Green handicap, a mile and three eighths on the turf in two 15 and 4. Final weekend stakes race from Belmont Park, the Lexington Handicap. Once again, long on the turf, a mile and a quarter, this time for three-year-olds in grade three company, $150,000 the purse. Let's head back to New York and the running of the Lexington. And they're off. Sharp impact, breaking alertly. And sharp impact. Heading for the lead as they make their way for the first turn. Deputy Land is away second. Here comes Urban King. Urban King now comes on through and secures a spot on the inside of Sharp Impact. Sharp Impact, though, lets it out a notch and sprints away two and a half lengths ahead of Urban King. Deputy Lad alongside that one, and then it's Hidden Truth, who's reserved at the back of the pack with Supervisor, and the early trailer will be Vetriano. Sharp Impact in front, the lead established. Migliori takes him in hand. Sharp impact now, the lead by a length, and Urban King comes on now. A 24 and 3 opening quarter. So Urban King will not let Sharp Impact get away early. He's only at three quarters of a length behind. And Deputy Lad is taken to the outside for clear running in third. Robbie Alvarado, a good hold there of Hidden Truth. They're sitting chilly about three and a half lengths from the front runner. Supervisors alongside him, and a break of another two and a half lengths back to Vetriano. The opening half, 50 and one-fifth seconds, the pace is slow to develop, and the leader remains sharp impact. Uncontested lead, midway down the back stretch. Urban King's been a length behind him most of the way, and on the outside, Deputy Lad now makes a move as they hit the half-mile pole. There's a break of another three, and Hidden Truth has been taken to the outside now, then Vetriano down toward the hedge, and Supervisor. Around the far turn, sharp impact. And now Migliori gives him a bit more rain to work with, and they spurt away. Spurred away to lead by almost two lengths. 
Urban King now being asked to pick it up as they come to the top of the stretch. Vetriano comes into contention down toward the inside. Hidden Truth four lengths behind. Top of the lane, Sharp Impact driving on the lead now. Urban King, here comes Hidden Truth with a bold run down the center of the course. One for long to go. Sharp Impact trying to gut it out for another eighth of a mile. Still holding on to that lead, three quarters of a length. Hidden Truth getting closer, so too is the wire. Urban King third, down to the finish. Sharp Impact still there. Hidden Truth could not get by him. Sharp Impact scores wire to wire, winning by a half a length over Hidden Truth. Urban King was third. Sharp Impact goes to the front under Richie Migliori and holds on by a half over the late charging Hidden Truth, who had really developed into a nice horse and switching to the turf. Urban King picks up his second consecutive third place finish in American racing as the odds on choice for who else? Bobby Franco, who did not pick up a win on this weekend's program, surprisingly enough. Although, with all those sprint races down in Florida, I guess we shouldn't be terribly surprised. Nonetheless, uh, Sharp Impact, a very nice effort by this horse back in the United States, had run in the U.S. early in his career, uh, now in the care of Karen McLaughlin, who has just been tearing it up. Uh, very nice efforts now, two in a row on the, uh, both of them on the engine on the front end. A sharp impact, a three-year-old Dark Bayer Brown, son of Siphon from Fast and Early by Carson City, was bred in Kentucky by Brereton Jones. He is owned by Mohammed bin Rashid al Maktoum, trained by Karen McLaughlin, ridden to victory by Karen's main go-to man, Richie Mc Richie Migliori, Sharp Impact, covers the mile and a quarter on the Belmont turf in 202 and 3. That wraps up another busy week of stakes racing action. We hope you've enjoyed the program, and we hope you'll be able to join us once more next week for Horses and Courses. Until then, I'm Jean Wood. Good luck at the races.